Welcome to the MedCOE Army Combat Fitness Test Forum. I am Master Sergeant Christian Jones, a Master Fitness Trainer with Charlie Company 187 Medical Battalion, and your moderator for today's event. Our host is Command Sergeant Major Clark Sharpentier, the MedCOE Command Sergeant Major. But before I turn it over to him in our panel, I wanted to make some administrative comments. We do have an in-person audience, and I encourage our in-person attendees to raise your hand and when called upon, reposition to one of the microphones to ask your ACFT-related question. For those joining us virtually on social media, please feel free to type your questions in the comments, and we will get to as many of those as we can. The overall purpose of the event is to ensure our soldiers understand that the U.S. Army launched a revised Army Combat Fitness Test based on feedback from soldiers, an independent RAND study, review of nearly 630,000 ACFT scores, and over three years of ongoing analysis. Implementation of the ACFT as the Army's physical assessment tool of record will enable the Army to maintain a high level of personal physical fitness, which is important to each soldier's holistic health and will support the overall readiness of the Army. The latest revisions to the ACFT maintain the Army's strong commitment to a culture of physical fitness while ensuring fairness in the transition to a new fitness test of record. The Army will incorporate the ACFT into personnel policies in a time phase, deliberate manner to ensure all soldiers can train and adjust to the new event and scoring scales before scores are used for personnel actions. Soldiers began taking diagnostic tests with the revised ACFT in April 2022. Did you know Record scores for the regular Army commence in October 2022, giving active duty soldiers six months to train for the revised test. Record scores for the National Guard and Army Reserve commence in April 2023, giving Reserve component soldiers a year to train for the revised test. By implementing this revised approach, the ACFT will provide an accurate assessment of a soldier's physical fitness level and sustain the Army's efforts to maintain a physically fit force capable of a wide range of missions. So in a nutshell, understanding the what, why, when about this test is what we hope you get out of today's forum. To kick things off, Command Sergeant Major Charpentier is going to make opening comments, and then we are going to ask the panel some frequently asked questions we are seeing as we head towards full implementation of the ACFT. We have an hour total for this event, so without further delay, let me introduce our panel. Lieutenant Colonel Kayla Romatar, H2F subject matter expert. First Sergeant Greg Rios, First Sergeant Alpha Company, 264th Medical Battalion. Psalm First Class Ray Chairs, Senior Drill Sergeant, 32nd Medical Brigade. Staff Sergeant Kiera Wheeler, Master Fitness Trainer. And finally, please put your hands together for our Med COE Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Clark Sharpentier. All right, good afternoon all, and thank you so much for being here in person, or for those of you who are in the virtual space, do appreciate it, because not everyone knows everything that they think that they know about the ACFT. And so this is an opportunity for us to continue to hone our skills and make sure that everyone is prepared, trained, and ready for what's on the forefront. And so, you know, why would we have a forum at this point? Because for everyone that's been assigned to the Med COE for the past two years, this has been something that's been ongoing. It's been continually reinforced. We've been doing diagnostic tests. We've been doing different forums. So why would we have to have an opportunity to sit here today and share some things? Well, you know, there's been a whole lot of recent changes. And really in the Army, the only thing that's consistent is changes. So we want to make sure that you, our audience, and all those that choose to uh, attend today have the, as much information because we owe you that as leaders and as fellow soldiers. So some of the key changes for the ACFT, age and gender scoring scales, just in case you hadn't seen that yet, and uh, performance norm scoring scales, which account for age and gender performance observed in ACFT test scores. As that large cohort of data came in, there was some information that really showed that uh, there needed to be some adjustments, and so Big Army went back and did that. So just in case you were not aware, 
the Army also eliminated the leg tuck from the test and uh, implemented the plank as the required scoring event to uh, assess core strength and also added a two and a half mile walk as an alternate aerobic event. So if you don't know all of this stuff, it's okay. And over the past couple of weeks, I've been spending quite a bit of time in, uh, in our leadership development footprints, the advanced leaders course, senior leader course, and Bullock. And through no fault of their own, we did run across some of our uh, junior officers that were coming in that were probably for the last couple of years in an academic environment somewhere, doing some things to become doctors, nurses, and some of those other things. And they had kind of lost the bubble on what was actually happening with the ACFT. So talking with a few of them, they were actually surprised that they weren't going to be able to do the knee tuck and that the plank was a thing. So all the more reason to make sure that, that we're doing this. And then talking with some of the ALC students and SLC students, you know, looking at some of the very specific uh, parameters of each of the exercises and what does it mean to be a grader or an evaluator for each of these exercises to ensure that they're doing it correctly. So uh, even though we think we know it all, there's always some room for growth. So uh, that's another reason why we wanted to uh, spend this time with you today and look at what can we answer for you. So thing that I would ask for all leaders, doesn't matter where you are and what uh, cohort of students, of soldiers that you supervise, don't assume that they know the current ACFT. Make sure that you, we, are delivering that information. And because all of us love to spend time on the interweb and find all that information out there in the virtual space, you can go to army.mil backslash ACFT to go to the web page and get all of this specific information. And, uh, you know, as I started to gather this panel together, I wanted to make sure that we had the experts on hand. So as you here in the audience and out in the virtual space, I ask all of the hard questions. I can make sure that they are the ones that are answering all the hard questions. I'll take all the softballs, and, and we'll go from there. But um, you know, as we look at master fitness trainers, as we look at holistic health and fitness and the tie together and the relationships between those, even though they are totally separate things, uh, so wanted to make sure that we had all cohorts represented on this panel. And so just for a thought process and, and as I've gone through a few years of looking at the ACFT even though it's in the title test combat fitness test I, I would say that for you know if, if we're going to correlate it to what we do here in the training and educating platform it's more of a study guide the ACFT itself is the study guide and it's the study guide that the instructor has handed out and you get to fill in the blanks to help with that learning so that the ACFT is the study guide and the actual test itself is on the battlefield and that's going to be the test of our fitness to fight to be able to do our missions and to be able to accomplish the things we need to do so with that i want to get to all of the questions so i will turn it back over to master sergeant jones thank you command sergeant major our first question is related to holistic health and fitness so it is for you lieutenant colonel ramatar how does the Army Combat Fitness Test tie into the Army's holistic health and fitness system? What is the connection? That's really a great question because it's often confused, and a lot of people think the ACFT and H2F are one and the same. Uh, the, the H2F system, or the holistic health and fitness system, is actually a cultural shift in the way commanders will train, develop, and care for their soldiers. There are five domains to that system. Physical is one of them, and then there's four non-physical domains, sleep, mental, spiritual, and nutritional. All of those domains can be found in FM 7-22. So of those domains, physical being one of them, ACFT ties into the physical domain as a commander's assessment tool of your physical readiness. So it's a tool the commander uses to assess how physically ready you are to do your mission. Um, now, H2F has a lot of different components to it. There's a governance component. That's your regulations, your policies, to include the changes that we see in the ACFT regulations and policies. There's the personnel component. So I'm uh, sure a lot of you have heard about the H2F teams, the physical therapists, occupational therapists, dietitians, strength coaches, cognitive enhancement specialists, a lot of really specific performance personnel that are going into units. You have your programming, and that's really FM 7-22 and the, its equivalent ATPs that outline the H2F exercises. 
But those programs are what are delivered down at the unit level, all the way down to the individual soldier. Those give you the footprint of what you should do in your training plans or just your overall lifestyle in order to become more, more ready. Then you have your equipment and facilities, and that's not just your physical performance equipment, also the medical equipment sets that equip those teams as they care for soldiers, and also the facilities. Some places have really nice facilities, depending on where you go. Fort Drum has some really nice facilities, Fort Bragg, Fort Benning, and some places are just starting to build them, like here at Fort Sam, um, to include your ACFT fields. That's part of it. And then you also have your, your leader education. And that's not just the education the teams provide to the individual soldier on how you individually become more ready, but also what we provide in professional military education, whether it's ALC, SLC, MLC, or the equivalent BOLIC, Career Course, ILE, SSC, any of those. How are we educating our leaders so that when they go in those positions, they know how to use the H2F system as a commander or as a first sergeant or as a command sergeant major. How do they use those systems to enhance the readiness of their unit, both individually as a soldier but as the overall unit? Um, so, again, it's just ACFT is a tool that we use to assess that physical readiness within the five domains of the entire holistic health and fitness system. Ma'am, and so I, I want to add on to that because, you know, as we were talking earlier, that you know the the ACFT is that tool but each of those domains within holistic health and fitness will potentially impact physical performance so looking at you know uh, nutrition what gas is being put in the gas tank and is the body going to work the way it's supposed to rest and then also when we look at uh, you know the cognitive and, and spiritual aspects of holistic health and fitness a soldier that's in a good place mentally is probably better prepared to increase their strength and they're probably in a better place to perform when it's demanded. So uh, th there's very much a symbiotic relationship between all of those parameters and increasing ACFT scores, but then also you score well and you perform well on the ACFT, then it probably increases that mental and that uh, self worthiness of an individual and self-confidence. Staff Sergeant Wheeler, the next question is for you. As a master fitness trainer, have you seen an increase or decrease in injury rates from the ACFT? Uh, great question. So I actually have seen uh, in a decrease in injury rates. Uh, I will give an example though. Um, when I first saw the uh, particular events and the scales, I went from the APFT mindset of I need to max each of these events and just went straight for the max, okay? I did uh, injure myself that way because I was not overall physically fit. So keyword, uh, physical fitness. Studies have shown that increases in physical fitness decrease musculoskeletal injuries. So we need to first work on that physical fitness to prevent those injuries. So uh, my advice would be don't go um, just straight into, you know, those max uh, categories, uh, work your way up, slow and steady, and that will prevent injury. So uh, for myself, I learned a, a good uh, lesson, and that would be my advice to other soldiers. And, you know, while I'm not a practitioner, just thinking of it holistically across the body, if, if the entire body uh, is more fit and the muscle groups are stronger and not just isolated to previous versions of the Army fitness test and now we're looking at it across the whole spectrum of the entire body then the likelihood of an individual injuring themselves by pulling a muscle or straining or, or breaking something because they haven't used it previously is reduced if more of the body is being used as we go through uh, physical readiness training and the ACFT so uh, really focusing on that and, and looking at what does it mean as a soldier to be holistically fit and prepared to deal with the ACFT itself. I would say that one of the things that, uh, that we need to be careful of, we need to be cognizant of as leaders, is making sure that we're doing the exercises in correct form. Um, because you got that individual that's out there and thinks that they're going to deadlift the max and they've never touched a, a weight set before and doing it all incorrectly and then yes that's where we're going to end up with the injuries so uh, leaders need to be engaged in that at this time i'm going to ask the audience audience do you guys have any questions up to this point 
Yes, ma'am, you could come up to the mic. Hello? Okay. So my question is, um, are there going to be changes to the height and weight protocol? And if so, will it be implemented before we actually have to take a four record in October? Yes, ma'am. We do have a question, and we will answer that coming okay. up shortly. So. Thank you. Let me, let me get to the question. That question as is. We don't have to go on the, the script because it, it, it's the same. Uh, it's, the, it's the same as the frequently asked question. So, ma'am, thank you so much for bringing that up and and getting to that. Um, and I don't want to steal all of the thunder on this, but much like ACFT and holistic health and fitness are two different programs, body composition and ACFT are two totally different programs. So as we were moving forward with adjusting the fitness test, uh, which is a soldier training and evaluation requirement, and body composition is a administrative soldier requirement that's governed by personnel policy, um, there is two totally different aspects when we're dealing with that. So uh, looking at it holistically, at the senior leader level, yes, there is some, some exploration into what does it mean uh, and what are the, the appropriate methods for uh, evaluating body composition standards and what's going to be the path ahead. But as of now, there is no change out there uh, specifically to adjust 600-9. And I'll open up for other panel members for comments. Um, uh also to um, chime in, so CIMNT and USARIM, they're currently doing a comprehensive study to determine the correlation between um, body composition and soldier physical performance. So that study is currently being performed based off of those results. There's not necessarily a promise that there will be a change, but they will use those re results, excuse me, to determine uh, what can be done next in reference to AR 600-9 and body composition. Good question. One, one more sorry. comment on that before we move on. And remember, body composition program is to ensure a healthy individual and an individual that is capable of doing their mission set, because that's ultimately what this is all about, and uh, looking at it healthily. You know, the ratio between musculature, between bones, between fat, and all of the other things that are in the body, those things are incredibly important but we still got to make sure that that ratio is adequate for what the Army needs and what each soldier needs to do on, on the front moving forward. So I know it probably didn't exactly answer your question, ma'am, but uh, it is something that is being studied right now. Command Sergeant Major Charpentier, based on the implementation timeline, what does that mean for me as a soldier? For example, when will soldiers start getting flagged for failing a record ACFT? That's a great question, and I know that's a concern of a lot of people because for the past two and a half years, we have not had a test of record, and there's been a lot of gimmies out there across the force. There's been individuals that have not had to meet a certain physical fitness standard, and so a little bit of a cultural shift. And so uh, some individuals, if they haven't been paying attention for the past year, two years, might be shocked if they haven't been studying because this is a test, you got to study for it, and you study for it in the gym or on the physical fitness fields. But bottom line, for those of us who are in Compo 1 regular Army, get ready, get set, buckle your seatbelts, because 1st of October, that is the implementation date for us, record ACFT. And that's this year. So we're at uh, a little less than 60 days. You've had advance notice, so continue to push towards that. And then for our uh, active guard reserve or, and, and our reserve component soldiers, uh, after 1 April of 2023, so an additional uh, grace period to get to meeting that standard before uh, failure of a record test and a retest, or failure of a record test would result in that uh, adverse action taking place. And so that's also going to um, implement or be impactful of professional military education. It's also going to be impactful on initial entry 
training courses and the requirements associated with those. So um, if you have not taken an ACFT up to this point, you have until the 30th of September to take a diagnostic ACFT. And if you pass it, you can roll it over to be your first record ACFT. Uh, but if, if you're going to try to hold it off, one October for active component and, uh, and uh, one April of the following year for reserve components. And then subsequently, for those individuals that, uh, you know, repetitively uh, are unable to meet the minimum Army standard, then uh, looking at uh, bars to continue service and separation and uh, basically pushing that out to uh, for regular Army and Active Guard soldiers, that second iteration would potentially put you into a position, a second iteration of failure, into a position where you could be separated, but it would not be prior to April 1st of 2023 for active component and April 1st, 2024 for reserve component. So um, those policies have not changed when we look at bars to continue service, just the test itself has changed. So uh, just make sure that uh, you and your soldiers are prepared to pass the ACFT, bottom line. Thank you, Command Sergeant Major. Next question is for First Sergeant Rios. How will the ACFT count towards promotions? That's a great question. Um, just to reiterate what Sergeant Major was saying, um, active duty and AGR uh, have the responsibility of, of uh, having that test on one October, anytime after that. And then also um, any failures, any subsequent failures for that uh, will result um, in a, either a bar or separation by 1 April 2023, no later than that, or no uh, starting on that day and after. Uh, for our um, Reserve and uh, National Guard, uh, that, that timeline starts 1 April 2023 uh, with the, uh, the, and then subsequently if they fail two uh, consecutive uh, uh, tests, then they can in initiate or, or bar or separate uh, starting 1 April 2024. Now, um, what that means with uh, as far as uh, promotions uh, wise goes into effect June 2023. So 2020, uh, June 2023 for the se uh, sergeant and staff sergeant board, that's when it will occur. Uh, the APFT, the current APFT that you have on record, a record APFT will count all the way up until March 31st of uh, 2023. That's for our uh, active duty in AGR. Uh, for our reserve and, uh, um, and National Guard, uh, their record APFT will be used all the way up until March 31st of 2024. Uh, right now, uh, that's the current guidance that is uh, uh, put forth, but there is uh, uh, further guidance will be announced. And I just want to reiterate as well, uh, if you go to www.army.mil slash ACFT, uh, has all this guidance uh, and um, will future guidance will also be posted on there as well. As far as the permanent pro profiles, um, any soldier that has a permanent profile, they will have a, uh, they will be given 60 points per event that they are not able to take. And then um, they will also be given a, an additional 60 points uh, for the uh, aerobic event that they, they, uh, they do take. And that will all correlate to their uh, PPW worksheet. Uh, the temporary profile and uh, postpartum soldiers that, uh, um, uh, it, that are in that uh, realm will um, be awarded a minimum uh, points of 360 uh, points for their ACFT. Um, further on with the uh, promotion points, uh, soldiers without an APFT will be awarded a minimum of uh, 360 points. Um, for those soldiers that do have an APFT, they will, they will be rewarded two times their APFT score. So if they have a, a 180, you know, times that by two, so on and so forth, that will be their points correlated to their uh, promotion points uh, worksheet. Um, soldiers without a, a, a record uh, APFT, those soldiers that are uh, specialists and above, uh, will have the opportunity to take a record APFT only uh, for promotion purposes. All right, and then, uh, like, uh, like I said, the reminder, the APFT will be used all up until March 31st, 2023, with June 2023 being that first board used for ACFT solely. Thank you, First Sergeant. Next question is for Senior Drill Sergeant Chairs. When will ACFT scores be reflected on soldier evaluations, and what do they reflect right now? Uh, that's a good question, Master Sergeant. So the uh, regular Army, the Army Reserves, the Army Guard, their evaluations will indicate uh, ACFT status 
uh, before the officers and the NCO, NCOs on October 1st, 2022 or later. For the reserve components, it's gonna be for, um, for the OERs and the NCOERs as well, April 1st, 2023 or later. And then for the academic evaluations, um, that too is gonna be October 1st, 2022. That's kind of much like the Sergeant Major stated from before. Um, as for right now, what it states is, you know, the, the MILF event message that we have from before that it's, it's not required. However, it's highly encouraged for, you know, soldiers to get out there and actually take that ACFT so they can see either one where they are and uh, get a better, better understanding of how they're gonna do. Uh, I know some of my panel members, uh, me, myself, I've gone out there, I've taken it, and I've seen our soldiers out there taking it. Uh, we, as drill sergeants, me being a senior drill sergeant, we, um, we highly encouraged our, our troops to kind of get out there with us and, and really push forth that effort into understanding what we're doing, why we're doing the events that we're doing, um, how the technique is gonna work, that's who's out there trying to help those guys out with their, with their um, deadlifts, making sure that they're not gonna hurt their backs, and uh, really trying to prevent those injuries, and I know some of my panel members can, um, can attest to that as well. Thank you, Senior Drill Sergeant. Next question is for Command Sergeant Major Charpentier. Before we get into that one, yes. uh, you know, j just a little bit more, because you know, for, for a lot of folks, you know, their, their concern and, and what is, how is this gonna impact me? How is this gonna impact my career? How is this gonna impact things moving forward? So to reiterate, evaluations, whether they're OERs, NCOERs that close after or on one October of this year or later, capturing a, a, an ACFT score on that evaluation, capturing an ACFT score on that evaluation. I'll say that one more time for it to sink in. One October of 2022, OER, NCOER, like less than 60 days from now, We'll have an ACFT entry, that, that little bullet comment that, you know, that, that we were exempt in accordance with Milper message, that is no longer the case. We're going back to uh, evaluating leaders on the physical component of leadership. And so I, I just encourage everyone, uh, once again, if you haven't been studying, you're probably behind the power curve. And this is not a test that you can cram for the night before. So uh, looking at um, soldier evaluations and how those ACFT scores are going to be captured and also on academic evaluation reports as you complete these courses, these PME courses, being included in those two and, uh, you know, how does that impact your evaluation as a leader as a whole? All right, thanks. Thank you, Command Sergeant Major. Next question is also for you. With recruiting and retention such high priorities, will soldiers be able to re-enlist without a record ACFT after the implementation period? All right, so uh, got it. We're, we're in a recruiting uh, and retention time frame right now where, where we're looking at our force. But ultimately, what are we trying to retain? What are we trying to bring into the force? We're trying to bring in individuals who can meet the mission, can meet the needs for uh, the requirements of their job. So uh, as this goes into our test of record, they will have to actually have a passing ACFT test. If they are flagged for failing an ACFT, like we talked about earlier, they have an, administra an administrative flag against them for failure, then that does preclude them from re-enlisting. And so, um, you know, that's something that uh, commanders, leaders, supervisors need to take into account, and individual soldiers too. Once again, cultural shift, last two plus years. It's been kind of on the back burner. We have gotta make sure that uh, soldiers are doing the right thing uh, physically. So I just wanna read this verbatim so that way there's no uh, confusion. So prior to October 1st of 2022, that's like time now, uh, regular Army and Army Active Guard Reserve, and then uh, April 1st of 2023, soldiers who are not flagged for an ACFT failure and are recommended for retention uh, will be allowed to reenlist. But after 1 October 2022, for regular Army and Army Reserve Active Guard. 
and April, 20, April 1st of 2023 for reserve component, soldiers must have a passing ACFT within the previous 12 months to be eligible for re-enlistment. Bottom line, they have to have a passing ACFT. Soldiers without a, a passing ACFT on or after their respective dates will have the option to extend up to 12 months to provide them an opportunity to pass a record ACFT, so their opportunity will be to extend 12 months. And additionally, soldiers must pass a record ACFT to graduate from all professional military education courses starting on October 1st, 2022. So we're getting close. We're getting close. For new enlistments, the OPAT, operate, Occupational Physical Assessment Test, is required to test uh, accessions and consists of four different exercises. And some of you, unless you've been in recruiting, you're probably not familiar with the OPAT, but uh, standing long jump, seated power throw, hex bar deadlift, and an interval run. That's just kind of to get into the Army, but ACFT for all of us in the Army. And uh, while the ACFT itself has no direct impact on accessions, all soldiers must have a passing record ACFT to graduate from initial military training courses ending after 1 October. So our pipeline of soldiers, they have to pass an ACFT before they can graduate starting 1 October. Um, and for uh, the command for uh, waiver uh, approval would either be the commanding general Tradoc, the surgeon general, or the judge advocate general, or the chief of chaplain. Those are the only ones that are even authorized to even approve or entertain waivers. Um, bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, once again, and this message might be might seem repetitive, but pass the ACFT. Pass the ACFT, prepare yourself for that. All right, back to you. Thank you, Command Sergeant Major. Ma'am, the next question is for you. If my unit is not programmed to receive an H2F team, how do I as a soldier better prepare myself in the physical domain to ensure I can pass the ACFT? That's the have and have not question, right? Yes. So, uh, yes, there are units that are going to get the H2F teams and all the H2F equipment, and it's going to be issued out to them. There's 110 brigades. Uh, in COMPO 1 that are, are on a distribution plan from now until FY30 and will be receiving H2F assets. Then there are the units that won't. Um, there are a lot of units that won't. It doesn't mean that you're at a disadvantage. It actually just means you have to look at the resources that are already readily available at the installation or location that you're at. And yes, we have a lot of geographically dispersed people. I mean, prime example, our recruiters, they're everywhere. But does that mean they don't have access to a place to exercise or keep fit? No, they should and they do. And it's up to those commanders to make sure they identify where those resources are. Um, plus, FM 7-22, I had the privilege of helping to write that doctrine. And the ATP 7-22.02, which outlines the H2F exercises, it's meant for the end user, the individual soldier to look at, develop individual training plans, and for master fitness trainers and commanders, develop unit training plans to, to get after your fitness. So open it up, take a look at it, use it as a guide. It's there for that purpose. It's there to help you. You don't need to have all the equipment. There's tons of social media forums that have outlined different ways to exercise without having gym equipment. I think everyone who went through COVID and there was no gym equipment available to purchase after the first month realized you could do other things to stay fit. So use the resources around you, look around you. If you really don't think you have resources, say you're stationed up in Antarctica for some reason, then ask your commanders what, what's available to you. Um, but it's out there and it's the individual soldier's responsibility to maintain their fitness. You can't look to your commander and say, make me fit. It's on you as a soldier, that's your responsibility. So look at your resources around you, look at what's available. It's on the website as well that we've mentioned a few times. Make sure you get it, look at it. If you need help, we have master fitness trainers. They're available, all the units have them. If you don't have them, ask your commander or first sergeant who they are uh, and use that, they're, they're there for you. Thank you very much, ma'am. We did have a question from Facebook for the panel members. What is the status of getting use of the Tufts field by the Johnson track? Is that in the works for use during ACFTs? Sorry, I believe they're talking about the one that got replaced uh, that used to be a tennis court. Um, I think that's our South. Yeah. Uh, so uh, 
that is not a MedCOE uh, owned entity. It is an R South owned entity, but uh, I know that our G3 is actually working with some coordination with Army South to uh, be able to utilize that field during the times that Army South is not utilizing it specifically. So uh, as an area for conducting an ACFT, it is a covered area and it does have the artificial turf and uh, the actual uh, container boxes are located there. So our South is working through a process right now to determine how they are going to uh, sign out the training area and all of the equipment associated with that. So more to follow on that, but that's something that will be soon on the horizon as another uh, available area for conducting an ACFT. Thank you, Sergeant Major. At this time, we're going to, before we get to our last question, we're going to open up to the audience for any questions that you would like to ask. Please come up to the mic. Thank you. Go ahead, first one. All right, good morning. First of all, I'm from the SLC. I'm, I'm kind of like asking a question on regards to how are you dealing with that culture shift? And this can go for any of the panel members. Right now we see as training for the test or training for the, the study guide, as Sergeant Major eloquently said, how are we going to make sure that we're also getting that upper body pulling strength with the pull-up not being a part of the leg tuck or any of the other aspects? How are we still assuring that we're training beyond the actual testing events and getting more of that? How are you seeing it at AIT or within the units within uh, our footprint? So I, I'd like to start just from the doctrinal perspective, and then I'll have you guys go after the kind of the, how it's implemented. But from a doctrinal perspective, we look at the different types of fitness, power, endurance, strength, uh, anaerobic endurance. And if you look at a training plan from those aspects, all of your upper body pulling power will be in there if you're outlining your exercises in the training plan correctly. We're not training to a test. We're training to the physical performance assets that we want. We want strength. We want power. We want anaerobic uh, endurance. We want aerobic endurance. If you build your training plan around that in your mindset, you don't have to worry about the test. You'll just show up and it's like another day of physical fitness training. So we have to get past that idea of I got to be able to throw up throw the ball every single day just to pass a standing power throw. That's actually the wrong way to do it. So once we start educating our soldiers on how to build a training plan, the test is just another day. So that's, it starts with us as leaders teaching that. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more, uh, ma'am. So one of the things that, we, that I know that we do for our IAT soldiers, or our AIT soldiers, if we, we do implement those, those training plans for them so that when they're training with us, they're doing those pull-ups and push-up drills that we can do. It's not necessarily that they're doing ball toss the whole time or they're doing just deadlifts, but as far as the pulling aspect of it, they're still, it's still in the training plan for 7-22 for them to be doing uh, pull-up drills, right? So um, they're still getting those extra, extra, extra reps in, those extra um, training that they would use in order to make their bodies be uh, physically better. But at the same time, like, we said, uh, like the ma'am said, it's going to take an individual, individual uh, test, you know? It takes them to buy into it, but it also takes our leadership to, I think the why we do it is what our gen the next generation wants to know. Why are we doing this, right? It's because when we deploy those explosive movements that we're doing for this, this test, that's what we, we need to be able to do, right? So I think it's the why. Also, I think, I think as leaders, we kind of uh, overcomplicate things in, in reference to that, right? So. A lot of the things that we do in the prep drill and in the climbing drills, all that stuff, if you break down that movement, that movement directly correlates to any other the different events that we do. And me using my, my MFT hat, I, I stress that to the soldiers uh, whenever they are doing, uh, um, you know, the, uh, the uh, bend and reach. You know, that movement definitely, uh, you know, gets them prepared for what, you know for the, uh, the, the standing power throw, different things like that. If you break down the movements for them and, and make sure that they understand what they're doing, I think ultimately they'll figure it out, uh, you know, to get uh, to gain proficiency in that in that specific event. One more piece to add on: you you asked about the cultural shift. Cultural shift takes time. We know that in any aspect, not just this physical aspect or H two F, any part in the army, the cultural shift starts with us as leaders. 
I mean, we knew when we implemented H2F and we were creating it, it would take about 10 to 15 years to truly shift the army to a different way of thinking. It doesn't happen overnight. It may happen overnight for one person, but for the whole army, it doesn't. So where does that start? It starts with the leaders. We have to start emulating what we want our subordinates and what those junior soldiers are going to emulate is what we do. So if we start training to a test, they're going to train to a test. If we start training so that we can become more powerful, stronger, quicker, faster, they'll start training that way too. So it starts with us as individuals. And to, to add on to that is... As we look at it from the leader perspective, yes, the ACFT test did change and leg tuck event was removed and plank was added in. What did not change was the PRT manual. Climbing drills still exist in there and are still part of what the training plan should be. So that's on all of us as leaders to ensure that we're working with our master fitness trainers and ensuring that our program, our fitness program, does include that spectrum of exercises to where individuals don't just train for the test. But realistically, there's still gonna be those pockets of folks that will train for the test. There will be those individuals that train for it. And, and that was the impetus for uh, physical readiness training in uh, the early 2010s. Why it actually came out was to try to drive that cultural change, at least on the front side, but what ended up happening, there wasn't a forcing function of a test to, to meet that mark. So thus, part of the impetus uh, for the initial thoughts on changing the APFT to the ACFT. But truly, it's on all of us as leaders every day to focus on why are we out doing physical fitness training. Thank you, team. Ma'am? Hello. Okay. okay. This is to um, clarify something Sergeant Major touched on a little earlier. You mentioned if we took a, a ACFT prior to 30 September, it can roll over to October. So if I took a diagnostic in April and passed it, will that count for October's test? So depending on the exact date that you took the diagnostic would determine whether or not it can be rolled over or not because the Army policy came out, and I don't know the exact day in front of me, but there was a specific date where Army policy said, yes, this date forward, then it counts. So uh, without knowing the exact date of, of your test or the exact date of that policy publishing, but uh, there is that time window in there, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. So, so just to just to answer that that specific time, it is one April twenty twenty two. So any any test after one April twenty twenty two can be rolled over. Great question. We do have another question. Why did the Army decide to keep both the push up and the plank exercise? Was uh, there when it was developed, right? Um, so the, pu the push-up, upper body endurance, is, it's a little bit different of a style push-up because in reality when we're laying flat on the ground during any combat operation, say we have to get down, uh, that push-up from the being flat on the ground is, is what we're emulating. So it changed the style of the push-up, but really the, the upper body endurance is still something we need to test. And, and all the studies leading up to this point showed upper body endurance is important function of warrior task and battle drills, something that everyone in the Army should be able to do. Um, going to the plank, yes, your arms will get tired in it if you're not training properly, but it's more of a core strength type assessment. So we're looking at the core strength of an individual. Everything that we do in the Army, most of the time we're carrying a load. Even if it's just your ballistic gear, you're carrying a load. We want to make sure your core strength is stable enough to carry that load. So it, it's really an assessment of can you carry your load? It, are you sound enough that you won't end up with back injuries? We're looking at that also the preventative, prevention of injuries function. So we want to make sure that we're not put leading soldiers down the path of doing a training plan that doesn't focus on the core because the core is essential for most of what we do. Thank you, ma'am. Go ahead, Sergeant. Good afternoon, ma'am, Sergeant Major, First Sergeant, Barnes, Staff Sergeant Major. Is it on? It's on. Okay. Sorry. I'm a little tired. 
Sorry, Major. Sorry about that. So, my question is in regard to the hand release push up. When it comes to hand release push up, is there a time frame for your hands to move out and come back? Is it on the soldier? Because in the reg it says move back quickly, but it doesn't say anything about moving out. And what is quickly? Quickly for me can be this or super fast or however. So, what's the time frame for the hand release push up for your hands going out and coming back in? Good question, Sergeant. So the ATP states that you will immediately uh, bring your hands from the T position to the starting position. Now the term immediately can be subjective, right? But if you look in the terminating criteria, not bringing it in immediately, it does not fall under that category. So I don't think it's, um, it's sorry, not that I don't think, ATP doesn't state that it's uh, grounds for termination, but it is good practice to motivate to the soldier to make a continuous effort to bring those arms back to the starting position. But it is, it is not a terminating criteria. Does that answer your question? Roger, most times I just, I, when the soldier is moving slowly, as long as they're moving, making a continuous effort to move out and move back in, I count the push-up. Exactly. And that's what I tell my graders to do when they grade the test as, as well. I did happen to have one grader who was a stickler for, it's gotta be a quick, fast movement, so she wasn't counting, even though it was continuous movement. Yeah, so that's why, you know, that validation is important. Before you proctor uh, that exam, make sure you're all on the same page and make sure you know what that ATP says and that you're following it. But it doesn't say that uh, you will not count the repetition, nor does it say that the soldier will be terminated. So it just says immediate, so that's subjective. Does that answer your question? Roger, thank you. Yeah, so words matter. And uh, I, I don't recall seeing quickly in any of the actual verbiage and the term immediately does not necessarily denote a speed. Immediately just means that it's the following action that occurs. So, uh, but yes, validation is the key to ensuring successful grading and correct grading of each of these events. All right, thank you, Command Sergeant Major and panel members. Last question for the panel. For anyone on the panel, what do you say to someone who says that by lowering the standards for women, are you disadvantaging them in conflict or putting their teams at risk? Here. Um, okay, so the studies that were designed and executed to help build the standards for what we now see as the ACFT, the 60-point standard is what equates to what you're able to do to execute your warrior task and battle drills. Everything past that is motivation. So think of it in that way. How do we get soldiers to motivate them to go beyond the minimum? We set a scoring scale to help them go beyond the minimum. We can't change science. Male and female bodies are just genetically different, physiologically different. The capacity that a female can do and a male can do is, is different. Now, do we have females that are on par and can do exactly what some of our high-speed like super who a males, sure, same the other way around. We have, you know, males that struggle with this scoring scale just as much as females do. I don't believe that's so much a gender issue as a motivation issue, and we just want to make sure the fairness is a motivation. But just remember that 60-point scale, that's what everyone has to do to stay in. It's the same for everybody. So keep that in mind when you're looking at that 60-point scale. We're, we're trying to, to show this is what everybody needs to do to stay in based on where you are. And we are confident that an 18-year-old male who meets his 60-point scale here and the 50-year-old male who meets his 60-point scale here can do the same job. That's what the science shows. Yes, and also that, 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 uh, the standards for like Rangers, Sappers, Special Forces, all that stuff, that still remains the same. They still have their own standard, and that standard will be met by uh, any candidate that's going through that, that pipeline. So, you know, the other thing is the Army standard versus job-specific standards versus unit standards, because for those of us who've been around for the Army for a while, probably have experienced in different places, different types of units, that there is a unit standard, 75%, 80%, 85%, whatever it is. Uh, you know, each one of those contributes to being able for soldiers in that organization to be able to meet their mission set. And so, ultimately, it's not, a, it's not an a question of advantaging or disadvantaging any one person. It's more of a, a question of what are we doing to ensure that the minimum requirement to be able to survive on the modern battlefield is met. 
And what are we doing to ensure that each of our career fields are able to do their assigned missions in whatever austere environments that they are placed into? So ultimately, it's just about ensuring survivability and ability to do the job on the battlefield. And so for the individuals that are looking at this from an advantaging or disadvantaging standpoint, um, you know, potentially a little bit of short-sightedness and just focusing on something that is very minute in really what we as an Army team do to ensure that we work together to, uh, to, war to uh, train, fight, and win. So um, I, I would say that it's not about lowering the standards for anyone. It's truly about getting to a better place than where we were. Because I would argue that uh, from APFT standards that we were under for over 30 years, that there was a much greater uh, delta or difference between a male or a female of a certain age or even the age groups than we are now with a much more comprehensive test that evaluates six different areas. So uh, being you, you asked, you know, what do I say to someone who's, who's bringing that up? I say, go out and do the best you can on the ACFT and encourage everybody else in your squad section or team to do their best. And if they're not meeting a minimum mark, then work with them and get them to that point. Thank you, Command Sergeant Major. We did have one more question before we turn it over to you uh, from Facebook. The question is, why isn't the two-mile run adjusted to a one-mile run since the ACFT has now doubled in events? I don't want to quote a senior leader of the Army, but uh, so yes, it, in science and when we do physical assessment, the one and a half mile or the 12 minute run or aerobic type event can test cardiovascular fitness. We're the Army, we're gonna do two miles. We're not the Air Force, we're not the Navy. We're the Army. So I think when you look at it from a perspective of science, yes, could we have done a one and a half? Could we have done a 12 minute run and see how far you got? Sure. But when in the Army, you need a little bit more mental fitness to get to that two mile mark. It's just as much a physical assessment of your endurance as it is a mental assessment of how far you can go. So think of it from that perspective. That's exactly correct, ma'am. We are America's Army. We are not the U.S. Navy. We're not the U.S. Air Force. <laughs> All right, great question. And turn it over to you, Command Sergeant Major. All right, so to, to my esteemed panel members, does anyone have any uh, closing comments, any thoughts that came up uh, you know, based off of any discussion? I, I will to anyone. All right, so... Uh, Thanks again to each one of you for being here. And I appreciate the, the moderator, Master Sergeant Jones, coming out and, and helping us get through this. I told him before we even started, it would be hard to corral us, particularly me. But uh, I do appreciate uh, you, know, you narrating and, and getting us to where we need to be with this. So uh, once again, if you're not an expert on the ACFT, strive to become an expert on the ACFT. And get familiar with it. And it's not going anywhere. For those of you who are holding out and thinking, okay, we're at... August 11th, yep, this is not going to be a thing come October 1st because you, you are just holding out hope. It, get over it. It is going to be a thing. It is a thing. Prepare for it. Accept it. Move on. Get through stages of grief and move on. This is what we do as an army, and this is what we need to do as a force. So uh, set realistic goals for yourself and uh, your unit, and then train towards those goals, realistic goals. You know, if you haven't been doing any of the activities for those muscle groups and you expect to go out and without doing any preparation, score 595, you might be setting yourself up for a cognitive disappointment. You gotta prepare and you gotta work for it. Set realistic goals. Conduct test events for your soldiers and yourself. Leaders, the best way that you are going to get more comfortable with this, the best way your soldiers are going to get more comfortable with this, is by doing it, 
by doing it often, by doing it multiple times, make sure that every single soldier to your left, right, upper echelon, lower echelon, takes a test. You know, at this point, all the mystique, all the worry, all of the consternation about what is this test that should be done. Shouldn't be any more fear of the unknown because everybody should have had a t an opportunity to take the test so far. Also, make sure that you are maintaining the equipment. There will not be any excuse that I can't conduct an ACFT because I didn't take care of my equipment. Leaders, that's part of uh, supply discipline and accountability of equipment. Make sure you're taking care of it. And, uh, you know, that equipment has to service a large population. So do the right thing. So soldiers today should be uh, having a little bit more understanding of limitations, capabilities, and their bodies, what goes into it, what are they eating, and are not strictly focused on the ACFT. While it is a tool and is a measure, and some people will focus on that, but ultimately leaders, organizations, and personnel should be focusing on what does it take to be successful on the modern battlefield. So I'm extremely proud of, to say that within the last couple of years here at the Med COE that uh, all of our trainees, all of our programs uh, have been had the opportunity to take at least one iteration of the ACFT. And that's, uh, you know, a, a testament to what each one of you as leaders in the Med COE have done to afford that opportunity to train the next generation of soldiers. So that way, this is not a surprise to them that it's not the first time that they see it. And so uh, each one of you accomplished that over the last year or a couple of years. So thanks to everyone that makes every test event safe, effective, and possible. And just remember, it's always about being ready for the battle that is going to happen tonight or tomorrow because trying to train, trying to prepare whenever it's time to go is far too late. So our readiness, our training has to start time now. And actually, if you're starting time now, you're already too late. You should have started yesterday or last week or wherever. So maintain your professionalism, maintain your courage, and maintain your enthusiasm to get out and enjoy the ACFT. You know, I, I, I had a very brief conversation with one of the Bullock students and said, yeah, this is a, another opportunity I get out to, to be with and participate in an ACFT. And he said, well, why are you saying it like that? Why is it that you're, you're saying that I get the opportunity? Because it is an opportunity. It's fun. And it not, should not be viewed as something as just a mandatory requirement. So thanks for what you do. And uh, just remember, our soldiers will succeed because we train them properly, we evaluate them properly, and we provide the motivation for them to do well. Medical Center of Excellence. Army medicine starts here.